we often like to forget the campy roots of Batman. After all, when we're given macho versions of this, and this, it's easy to forget that the Batman as a character has had a long lineage as a pulp hero, mostly written to be consumed by the masses, namely those of a younger audience. Except when Matt Reeves came along. What I find to be the greatest achievement above all else is the way the film constructs and deconstructs Batman's symbolism and iconography down to his bare essentials. While the film does pay homage to the caped crusader's pulp and noir roots, it does not shy away from commenting about the very idea of the Batman, and by proxy, finding a new way to comment and move forward with superheroes. Thus, when we enter the world of the Batman, we can observe its discussions about the very concept of iconography and audience within its story. Batman, unlike its other modern counterparts of the time, is not shown as a beacon to be emulated, but avoided, showcasing what living as a vigilante is like. He is obsessive, pervasive, and violent, as it detaches him from the rest of the world. Superheroes, from their origins, are designed for the purposes of allowing children and young adults to understand morality and build character to improve their moral fiber. That's what it has always been. That's not to say superhero stories cannot be complex and explore the nuances of storytelling, but characters like Superman, Spider-Man, and more are created for a specific audience in mind that need a level of fantasy that is omnipresent on both the page and screen. While these children, who become teens, who become adults, grow up, their stories themselves should understand the core of the superhero, not as a way to shove realism into the stories, but to understand that their stories are not realistic, that they are fantasies, stories that speak moral and emotional truths. Thus, the problem isn't the superhero, the problem is placing them in a realistic context. One need not look further than Alan Moore's quote to put it succinctly. I've been told the Joker film wouldn't exist without my Joker story, but three months after I'd written that, I was disowning it. It was far too violent. It was Batman for Christ's sake. It's a guy dressed as a bat. Increasingly, I think the best version of Batman was Adam West, which didn't take it at all seriously. While many can disagree with his personal political views, I tend to agree with this notion. Superheroes are ridiculous. The fact that they can enact justice on their own terms, making the actions of the many a cause for one, is ridiculous. But that's the point. But so often are superheroes so gritty and placed in so much realism that it's hard not to see how often they revel in their violence without introspection. One only need to read Rorschach as an example of this philosophy, as he is the most explicit in what is grotesque about bringing superheroes into the quote-unquote real world. In the world of Watchmen, Rorschach's actions aren't portrayed in splash pages or celebratory revels in violence, but instead makes them small, barely playing into glorifying his actions. Unlike his film counterpart, one need not look further than this. Levine dragging Kovacs away to solitary and the other man to the prison hospital. As they dragged him away, Rorschach spoke to the other inmates. He said, none of you understand. I'm not locked up in here with you. You're locked up in here with me. Equating reality, more specifically dark reality, as truth undermines the very fantasy, the hope, and childlike youth of the characters you are adapting. While I am personally not opposed to this idea, especially considering the success of The Dark Knight, and other such beloved classics, it is very strange to think that these characters are the very same that we slap onto lunchboxes and call heroes. Do I believe that superheroes should only be for children? No. Do I believe that superheroes are immature? Sometimes. But it's not something to shy away from. It is the very iconography that the Batman comments on that makes superheroes valuable in modern society. You can have your superheroes, a la The Boys, take the place of our beloved superheroes in a more adult-oriented setting. But taking away these beloved heroes from their first audiences feels quite juvenile in itself. 
These are the audiences that creates interest in the characters. It is their interest in their ridiculous and over-the-top iconography that creates the stories that are fit for all. Injecting realism into the story is not the way to do it, however. It takes away their abstraction and intent and creates something grotesque and unlike what makes these characters fascinating to begin with. When we adapt a superhero, we have to understand that the ridiculousness and the goofiness of the stories aren't something to shy away from. The point is to embrace and take those elements seriously, and by doing so, taking the iconography that which audiences attach to seriously. Batman, as a character, has become so dark as of late, but the Batman understands that and truly inspires because, by the end, even the title character understands the importance of its own iconography as a hero. This is what a superhero being adapted should be like.